Hi, this is Ron Sipsik. This is the first video in a five-part series on basic principles of supply and demand. In this video, we're going to take a look at the difference between a change in the quantity demanded and a change in demand. This terminology confuses students, and so we want to make clear with graphs what is the difference between a change in the quantity demanded versus a change in demand. So we begin with the picture on the left, and we're going to assume here that on the left there's been a change in price. So let's write that in. Assume that there has been, let's say, a decrease in the price of butter. Let's also say that at the same time, the taste for butter has remained constant. Taste is what we call a non-price factor. It's a factor other than price that affects the buyers. In fact, there are many non-price factors, things like income and the prices of other products and expected prices and population. All of these factors can affect market demand. We're going to assume here that all of those factors are being held constant, and we'll just put taste in here to illustrate that. So if the price of butter goes down and the taste for butter and everything else stays the same, we would expect that buyers will buy more butter. So there will be an increase in the quantity of butter demanded. Now how do we show this graphically? Well, we show this by um, moving along a demand curve. For instance, let's pick a price, call this price 1, find the point or the coordinate on the demand curve, read down, let me, um, let me shift us down a little bit here, and if you read down, you'll pick up the quantity demanded that corresponds with that price. So at this point, it's a coordinate. P1 corresponds with QD1. All right, now, let's say that the price of butter for some reason drops to P2. Maybe butter producers have produced an abundance of butter this year uh, because the dairy, the dairy market has been strong and milk prices have been cheap and and if I know what I'm talking about butter comes from milk somehow some way let's just even if it's not true let's pretend all right anyway the price of butter has dropped for some reason we have moved from point one to point two what do we show we show an increase in the quantity demanded notice that a demand curve represents what we call the law of demand and what is the law of demand? It's a simple proposition. As the price of something drops, people buy more of it. Or, as the price of something rises, people buy less of it. Notice when we draw a demand curve, I'll just bring it over here, we make the assumption ceteris, C-E-T-E-R-I-S, paribus. Now, what does ceteris paribus mean? It means all other factors that affect buyers are being held constant. So as I said up here above, the price has dropped. All the other factors that affect buyers, including taste, are being held constant. Buyers will want to buy more. Notice now, this is important. Let me change colors here so I can make an explanatory note. Notice that the demand curve for butter did not move. We moved along the demand curve, but the demand curve did not move. It did not shift. So we would say then that there is no no, 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 no change in demand. The term change in demand refers to a shift in the demand curve. The demand curve did not move here, so there was no change in demand. So somebody who's trained in economics usually does not say something like this. The price of butter decreased, the demand for butter increased. In economics, because we're very careful with the terms we use and we're trying to communicate precisely with each other, we don't want to communicate a shift here. There is no shift. So a drop in price, a decrease in price, does increase the quantity demanded. The quantity demanded goes up. We can see that. But the demand curve itself does not shift. If it does not shift, there is no change in demand. Okay, let's go to a different color. And now let's go to a change in demand. What does that look like? All right, come alive, pen. Let's assume 
that there, there is no change in the price of butter, but let's say there's been an increase in the taste for butter. A new study has been published indicating that buddy, butter is healthier than margarine for people. People who eat butter live 20% longer than people who eat margarine. Okay, and let's just believe it's actually true. So what is this going to do to the consumption of butter? It's going to increase the consumption of butter. People that buy butter and margarine are going to be even more attracted to butter. So here we have a demand curve. We're going to put a D1 on that. You'll see why in just a minute. Let's pick a price. Call this P1. Now we're going to hold this price constant because we said the price of butter doesn't change in this example. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit if that's okay. And P1 corresponds with QD1. Notice, though, that there has been no change in price. No change in price means no movement along the curve. There has been a change in a non-price factor. Oh, this is big. This is big. It's so big, I'm going to call it big squared, big times big. And taste is what we call a non-price factor. Now, there's a deep and profound reason why it's called a non-price factor, because it is not price. My cat, Mr. C, yes, my cat is named Mr. C. My cat, guess what, is a cat. My dog, Buddy, is a non-cat. Why is Buddy a non-cat? It's because he's not a cat. Wow. That is profound. Now, let me get a different color going here. I'm really feeling the inspiration and uh, having a little technical difficulty here. There we go. Okay, we got blue going here. Now, let's we've, we have to show that there's been an increase in the quantity demanded. We have to show that. But listen, there has been no change in price. How are we going to show people buying more at the same price? The only way to do that is we have to move the demand curve parallel. It's got a little wiggle in it. We have to move the demand curve parallel to the right. By moving the demand curve parallel to the right, we now show that there's been an increase in the quantity demanded but there's been what? No change in price. Notice that there has been movement from one point to another point, but notice that point two is not on the same demand curve. It's like traveling along a highway. Over here, we're moving along the same highway. The lower price simply moves you along the same relationship, the same highway. But over here, we've moved to a different point, but we've switched highways. We've jumped to a new relationship a new relationship between what? Price and quantity. Now, this is a change in demand. Why? Because this represents a shift in the demand curve. The demand curve moved. Specifically, this is called an increase in demand. Why is this an increase in demand? Because people are buying more People are buying more at the same price. So if people are buying more at the same price, this is called an increase in demand. Now, let's, let's make a note of this, because this is technical, but we want to be sure we get this. An increase in demand is an increase in the quantity demanded that has nothing to do with price. Well, what caused that to increase? Taste. Well, what is taste? Taste is a non-price factor. Now let me go back over here and get some nice colors, new color going. And let me list for you a number of factors that could actually increase demand. And I'm going to focus on an increase in demand because I've represented that with the diagram. And I'll just leave it up to you to look, explore a decrease in demand and the factors that cause that. First of all, let's just make a couple notes here first. Movement along 
a demand curve is caused by, I hope you're writing this down, is caused by a change in what? In price. So what moves us along the demand curve? A change in price. The price drops, we move down it. The price increases, we move up it. What's the effect? Only, only a change in the quantity demanded. No change in demand. Now, a shift in the demand curve is caused by a change in what? In a non-price factor. So price moves us along the curve. Non-price factors shift the curve. Notice that when a non-price factor changes, taste changes, not only do we have a shift in the curve, but we have a change in the quantity demanded. So in the case of a change in demand, you'll have both a change in demand and a change in the quantity demanded. In the case of a change in price, where you're not shifting the demand curve, you only have a change in the quantity demanded. All right, so again, let's go down and let me, let me just list a few factors that could actually shift that demand curve to the right. I'm going to do this very quickly, uh, but let's, uh, let's put some down here. One, taste, specifically an increase in taste. That would lead to an increase in demand, which again is a what? Right word shift. That's big. How about an increase in income? Well, an increase in income could cause the same thing, an increase in demand. Providing the good is what we call normal. And it's this is this is a little bit circular in that I'm I'm kind of just giving the definition here. Uh, in, a normal good is a good where if income increases, there's an increase in demand. So whenever an increase in income leads to an increase in demand, the product is called normal. For instance, steak. Steak would fit that because as people's incomes go up, they're more likely to eat better cuts of meat. Um, hot dogs would be just the opposite. If income decreased, let's say that somebody lost their job, but they still want to put a little meat on the table, they're more likely to put things like hot dogs and bologna and maybe cheap hamburger on you know on the plates so if incomes are falling and people are demanding let's say more hot dogs well then that product is actually that product is actually called an inferior product now again i'm not i'm not passing judgment here this isn't a moral question uh, and and i'm not saying the buyer isn't eating very good hot dogs you know there are are inferior hot dogs and superior hot dogs but let's face it, we got to come up with some sort of classification. Economists have used normal and inferior as ways to distinguish how income affects demand. Okay. On this, had a little accident here in the kitchen, but everything's okay. All right. So increase in taste, increase in income if the good is normal, decrease in income if the good is inferior. All of those things could increase demand. How about an increase in the price of a substitute good? So let's say we're talking butter here, and margarine gets more expensive. So if we're talking butter and margarine gets more expensive, this is the substitute margarine. That could increase the demand margarine. That could increase the demand for butter. A decrease in the price of bread, a complement, could actually lead to an increase in the demand for butter. Back in the day, uh, it used to be that people liked to eat bread and butter together. Today, that's not as common. But amongst older people, like me, bread and butter at least are remembered to be complements. Usually, you would put butter on your bread. Very common back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. I don't even eat bread today, which means I don't eat much butter. Number four, 
an increase in the expected price of what? Of butter. So if we expect that butter prices are going to go up due to some, let's say, interruption in supply or something that disrupts the ability of you know, producers of butter to get ingredients they need, that could lead people to demand more butter in the near term. Number five, an increase in population. So all of these factors, all of these factors, all of them lead to an increase in demand. Now in our next lesson, we're going to actually take a look at the difference between a change in the quantity supplied and a change in supply. See you then.